Okay, class 10. Now, let's begin our class. Good afternoon, everybody. So, how are you? Can, can you hear me? Now, now it's not coming. What's the reason? Okay, can, can you hear or not? Yeah, you can hear, right? Okay. Students, now listen. So, today is 56th day of lockdown. So, lockdown is increasing day by day. So, it has gone up to 20th of Jester 2077. What to do? You are far away. Even though we seem, it seems you are quite nearer to us. And hope you are safe and healthy. So, oh, who is this? Who is this person? So if you start playing such things, then it will be disturbed to others, right? Okay, friends. Uh, we have completed two chapters of science. They are force and classification of elements. We have done one chapter of physics, next chapter of chemistry. And in today's class, we are discussing about one chapter of biology. What is the chapter? The chapter is invertebrates. We are going to discuss about invertebrates. In class 9, you have studied about classification of plants and animals. There you have discussed about different phyla of animals, different divisions of plants. So, today's class is based on about those invertebrates which are useful to us, which are useful to us. Some invertebrates are harmful, some are useful. And dear students, are you ready with pen and paper? Show me your pen and paper, everybody. Saraj, where is your pen and paper? Karuna? Asok, where is your pen and paper? Good, good. Area, good. Next, Sujina, where is your pen and paper? Sujal has already shown me. Uh, Bibars is showing, good. And uh, Vivek, Vivek, there is pen and paper. Shreya, where is your pen and paper? Welcome, where is your pen and paper? And Pratik, manage pen and paper. So, our class should be interactive class. Not only listening, you have to write down what the teacher says. It must be written. So if you write, then it will be stated in your mind. That's why listen, write down. If any problem, unmute your audio and then ask question to me. I'm ready here. Dear students, let's begin our new chapter today. I'm going to share the document for discussion. So here it goes, class 10 PDF. It's already made. All right, students. Can you see something over here? In body breath. What is in body breath? Do you know? In body breath means. Okay, tell me. Which do not have backbone or vertebral column. Which do not have backbone or vertebral column are called 
in multiplex. So students, it's given here one thing. What is that? Objective. On completion of this lesson. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir. Yeah, please. Oh, just I have already accepted. Let me see. Oh, just he's already connected. Oh, just is connected, sir. Yeah, he's, he's there over there. Okay, in vertebrates are those animals which do not possess backbone or vertebral column. We have already discussed. Here is one objective of this lesson. After completion of this lesson, you must be able to what? Able to explain the external structure of silk moth and honeybee. Next one. Write the life cycle of silkworm and honeybee with diagrams. And write the usage of silkworms and honeybee. So, these are the objectives. Students, can you remember the different phyla of invertebrates? Different phyla of invertebrates are Porifera, Silentrata, yeah, Platyal Mintis, Nematel Mintis, Arthropoda, Anilida, Mollusca, and Echinodermata. Among them, now we are going to discuss one group. What is that? Arthropoda. What do you mean by Arthropoda? Arthro means jointed. Pores means appendages. Those invertebrates whose legs are jointed are called arthropods or arthropoda. So, arthropoda is further divided into four classes. Those four classes are Crustacea, Myriapoda, Arachnida, and finally Insecta. Finally, Insecta. So, Insecta, those animals which belong to phylum Insecta, sorry, class Insecta, are called insects. So, you can give the example of some insects like butterfly. Housefly, honeybee, moth, uh, dragonfly, but uh, etc. Okay, so if you talk about insects, there are more than one million types of insects. Insects are maximum. Okay, so their types are maximum. Many, many species of insects are found there and some of the insects are useful to us some are harmful so if you talk about useful insects like honeybee it provides us honey isn't it silk moth that provides us silk these are useful insects and if you talk about harmful then housefly is harmful because it transmits different type of diseases. I mean, you can see, near to me also one fly is moving. It's very difficult to be away of, I mean, away from them. Comes immediately, isn't it? In your side also, if you see, there may be some house flies. Name only, it's a dinner. So house fly means from in house. Next harmful insect is mosquitoes. Nowadays, you may be attacked by mosquitoes. Next one, cockroaches. So, they are harmful to us. So, we can say some insects are useful, some are harmful, and some insects are neither harmful nor useful. So, dear students, our topic is connected or concerned with two useful insects. What are they? Silk, moth, and honeybee. So, we will be concentrated towards them only. Why silk moth is important to us? Because it provides us silk. It gives us silk. And why is honeybee important to us? 
it gives us lovely lovely yummy yummy honey do you like honey or not so lovely honey right not only that not only that yeah okay the honey bees are really useful to us because they have got many more many more uses we will be discussing later on dear students let's begin our main first topic what is that silk moth and i have already circled it silk moth you can see here silk moth that is insect that is insect whose larva produces lovely fiber called what is that fiber called silk fiber silk fiber okay so insect does not produce silk make your concept clear insect does not produce silk but its larva produces silk so silk fiber is very long very durable and silk clothes are very comfortable to wear okay and silk is obtained from cocoons cocoons means that is outermost covering of pupa of silk worm or silk moth student listen hey, i am saying insect doesn't produce silk larva produces silk and cocoon is the outermost cover of silk moth it means there is something connected what is that connection i will tell you after some time and in nepal mainly two types of silk worms are reared what are those two types of silk worms i am going to tell now they are seri silk worm and eri silk worm please write their names the types of silk worms or silk moths reared in nepal are seri silk worm or silk moth whose scientific name is bombyx mori you can see in the screen b o m b y x bombyx mori and another silk moth is seri silk moth or atacus ricini in nepal mainly two type of silk worms are reared they are eri silk moth scientific name is atacus ricini seri silk moth bombyx mori is that clear for you student yes, bombyx mori and atacus ricini these are the two type of silk moths reared in nepal okay students i say two type of silk moths names also given then what about their food their food also differs check out here airy silk moth feeds on castor leaves airy silk moth feeds on castor leaves and seri silk moth feeds on mulberry leaves airy silk moth castor leaves seri silk moth mulberry leaves is that clear now let's discuss let's discuss about classification of silk moth how is it classified classification is kingdom animalia phylum arthropoda right class insecta then insecta common name what is the common name you can say silk worm or silk moth dear students listen why is it called silk worm or silk moth actually the adult the insect is not useful to us its larva is useful so the larva is worm have you seen caterpillar or not have you seen caterpillar
from instars first instar second instar third instar and fourth instar so first second third and fourth okay so when the egg hatches then immediately larva is produced that is called first instar larva when the egg hatches when larva is produced that is called first instar larva which color is gray what is the color gray color okay and the body has 12 segments if you write in a table form like first instar color segment it will be easy all right and students this larva is voracious means it feeds a lot it does not stop eating it's continuously look at this upper figure here this is the larva so larva has got head and here is one dorsal horn is given it is for uh balancing the body and here are some legs this side here are spiracles and it contains pseudo legs pseudo means false feet and what does the larva feed on the larva feeds on either castor leaves or mulberry leaves castor leaves or mulberry leaves these these larvae eat continuously from 4 to 5 days continuously day time night time it doesn't matter and afterwards they become inactive they become passive eat for they eat for how many days they meet for so they eat for 4 to 5 days stop eating become inactive and what happens after eating a lot its size increases isn't it so they change their old skin and develop new skin that is called molting so molting they feed on their food for 4 to 5 days and become inactive then slowly their size increases they change their old skin and get new skin that process is called molting changing old skin is called molting after molting another larva is produced that is called second instar larva when it is formed actually see on sixth day second instar larva is produced twelfth day third eighteenth day fourth and twenty sixth day fifth instar larvae are produced here you have to keep in mind they eat for four to five days rest their size increases and they change their skin 